I'll classify this segment under the motivation group of videos that I've done. And this is more of taking control of your mind, making your mental, emotional, spiritual, physical relationship life better. So I'm going to talk about David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. And just as a warning, his book will be generously sprinkled with profanities. So for some of you, it's not appropriate. It's certainly not appropriate for kids. And there's very significant adult themes in his book as well, particularly in chapter one, he talks about his childhood, which is uh, extremely difficult and it's difficult to listen to. But uh, if you are open to that and you're okay with that and you're solid enough in your own life to handle that kind of material, and you don't mind the profanities thing and so forth, go get this. It's uh, definitely well worth it. I'm not even done with the book yet and I'm, here I am doing a video on some of the content because I wanted you to hear it. So I'm just going to quote some stuff. I don't think he would mind if I did. And uh, this is going to be out of chapter 10. I am not using any profanities. I'll, I'll uh, straighten those out here or just replace them as time goes along. His chapter 10 of J David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me, just a section of it. I'm not down, meaning I'm not cool. I'm not down with the prevailing mentalities of American society. The ones that tell us to go with the flow or invite us to learn how to get more with less effort. For, forget that shortcut stuff. That sentence had uh, different colorful stuff. The reason I embrace my own obsessions and demand and desire more of myself is because I have learned that the on only when I push myself beyond pain and suffering, past my perceived limitations, that I am capable of accomplishing more physically and mentally in endurance races and also in life as a whole. So if you know David Goggins, you'll hear, if you know some of his background stuff, you know he's a Navy SEAL and he's done endurance races and so forth, but I, I have to tell you the heavy theme in this book is about improving your life, getting rid of your fears, changing the way that you think so you can accomplish what you want to accomplish in your life. It's not just about how to be an endurance athlete. You can certainly get that out of it as well. But I think it, he's more wide open in trying to help lots of people change their fears and their traumas and their hurts and come out on the other side a better version of themselves. I believe the same is true for you. The human body is like a stock car. We may look different on the outside, but under the hood we all have huge reservoirs of potential and a governor impeding us from reaching our maximum velocity. In a car, the governor restricts fuel and air so it doesn't burn too hot, placing a ceiling on performance. It's a hardware issue. The governor can be easily removed. And if you disable your governor, watch your car rocket beyond 130 miles an hour. Okay? So he's talking about a hardware issue in a car, understandable, easy to remove. It's a subtle process in the human animal. Our governor is buried deep in our mind, intertwined with our very identity. It knows what and who we love and hate. It's read our whole life story and forms the way that we see ourselves and how we like to be seen. It's the software that delivers personalized feedback in the form of pain and exhaustion, but also fear and insecurity. And it uses all of that to encourage us to stop before we risk it all. But here's the thing, it doesn't have absolute control. Unlike the governor in an engine, Ours can't stop us unless we buy into its junk, another word for that, junk, and agree to quit. These are the kind of things that he talks about again and again in his book. And he talks about callousing your mind, which means exercising your mind, conditioning your mind, working your mind like a muscle, which I've talked about for 300 years on, on my videos here. And all the other people, all the personal development and thought, uh, thought control people and so forth that I've, that I've mentioned are talking about very similar things. Sadly, most of us give up when we're only given around 40% of our maximum effort. Even when we feel like we have reached our absolute limit, we still have 60% more to give. That's the governor in action. Once you know this to be true, it's simply a matter of stretching your own pain tolerance 
letting go of your identity and all of your self-limiting stories so you can get to 60%, 80%, and beyond without giving up. I call this the 40% rule. And the reason it's so powerful is that you, if you follow it, you will unlock your mind to new levels of performance and excellence in sports and in life. And your rewards will run far deeper than mere material success. I, I just thought that section was so awesome. I obviously wrote it down in my very technology-oriented way, right? And then today, I'm going to insert this from Tony Robbins. I was listening to a Tony Robbins video, June 14th of 2021. The title of this video, and you can find it on Tony Robbins' uh, YouTube page, Five Keys to Living Your Best Post-Pandemic Life. And so he was giving these five keys. And it's like a 20-minute video. It's fantastic, like all of his other stuff. Number one on his list was feed your mind. And when he's talking about feeding your mind, he says, take deliberate steps, Tony Robbins says. Take deliberate steps to feed your mind, just like you would feed your body, with good stuff every day. And he would say, listen to thought-provoking material, like this video, like David Goggins, like Tony Robbins, like Louise Hay, like whoever it might be, right? And then he said, what is it that screws up everyone's life? Fear. Fear is the number one thing that keeps people from doing what's necessary. And that's exactly what David Goggins is talking about. David Goggins in other interviews and so forth says, fear is my fuel. And I've had people, individuals in my life that I know that have accomplished great things, whether it's wonderful personal relationships, husband and wives and so forth, and great children and great families and uh, wonderful business successes and delivering lots of good to, to people and so forth. That, and these people that I'm thinking of right now, they had really challenging childhoods like David Goggins did, but they used their past as their power and their fear as their fuel and their wounds were wonderful. So they, they changed that context of what happened to them instead of why me, woe is me, and to using that as, as power that they can move forward and do great things with themselves and become the best version of themselves. The 40% rule, as this is continuing with Goggins, can be applied to everything we do. Because in life, almost nothing will turn out exactly as we hoped. There are always challenges, and whether we are at work or school or feeling tested within our most intimate and important relationships, we will all be tempted to walk away from commitments, give up on our goals and dreams, and sell our own happiness short at some point. Because we will feel empty like we have no more to give when we haven't top tapped even half of the treasure buried deep in our minds, hearts, and souls. Again, that's the 40% rule, and that's pretty interesting. In his book, he gives example after example when he thought, that's all I got, and he realized, <laughs> no, it's not. The athletic metaphors that he uses over and over again in his book and in his, in his interviews and so on and so forth, um, like running a marathon and even an ultra marathon with no training. And if you, if, if you know a little bit about his background, he did three S Navy SEAL hell weeks in one year. Um, injuries took him, uh, took him away from the first two and then he had to do it a third time. He used that as metaphors of how he was able to overcome these things and push forward when he thought he was done, when he thought he was done. I know how it feels to approach an energetic dead end. I've been there too many times to count. I understand the temptation to sell short, but I also know that impulse is driven by your mind's desire for comfort, and it's not telling you the truth. I translated that into fear. And uh, in prior shows, I talked about if we have 60,000 thoughts per day, several thousand per hour, 70% of them or more are fear-driven because remember, and Tony Robbins teaches us as well, that our, our brain is there not to make us happy. Our brain is there to make us survive. And that's why we move toward fear and we move toward comfort. Because when we're comfortable, we're not putting ourselves out there and risking things. And that's a protection mechanism tied into fear. It's your identity trying to find sanctuary not to help you grow. It's looking for status quo, not reaching for greatness or seeking, whatever, uh, uh, seeking wholeness. But the software update you need to shut your governor down is no supersonic download. It takes 20 years to gain 20 years of experience. 
And the only way to move beyond your 40% is to callous your mind day after day, which means you will have to chase pain like it's your damn job. That's pretty interesting. So literally, on my way over to the studio here in Woburn, Massachusetts, I'm listening to it and I scribbled, and that's why I was a few minutes late, and I always make them late here, which is terrible. I heard this part of the book, so I'm going to finish with this out of Gog David Goggin's book, Can't Hurt Me. If you want to master your mind and remove your governor, you will have to become addicted to hard work. Because passion, obsession, and talent are only useful tools if you have the work ethic to back them up. My work ethic is the single most important factor in all of my accomplishments. I can't wait to hear your feedback. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller.